All right, so this is uh, the last time we meet. We pretty much uh, covered everything that I wanted to cover. And uh, with all this online slash face-to-face uh, -face thing and all the groups that have uh, that had to be divided into two subgroups, uh, I think somebody asked me, uh, is there anything we have missed uh, if we have done this thing the pre-COVID way? And my answer is to that question is you didn't miss much. In fact, there's a possibility that you got some more of uh, of, uh, of the material because uh, some of this online thing, it enabled me to show some more details and spend uh, more time uh, going over um, a detailed version of the lab demonstrations. Like for example, I was able to do just maybe a 20 minute demo in class for every lab and we would just do one lab per class. Uh, this way I was able to do maybe two hours demo and you would be able to watch that and see microscopic details of everything. So uh, maybe in that way you got a little bit more of it. We still were able to meet face to face and uh, and we got, uh, we got the content as we should have. So you haven't missed anything, okay? At least on this course. Okay? Okay, so um, there is only one thing that uh, we didn't have time to go over, and it 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 falls in the part of the fiber optics or optical fiber uh, uh, topic, and uh, it is the mechanical splice. So what I was um, uh, what I did here, and I'm not going to evaluate you on that. What I've done is. Uh, yeah, where's my laptop? There it is. Okay, and if you go on to the YouTube playlist, can we get there? Hmm. YouTube, where's my YouTube playlist? There is our... Um, library here. Well, what's going on? Home, library, home. They changed the things on YouTube, just, are you gonna be kidding me? Here's my home. Here's a library, playlist. <laughs> Okay, let me just do a little bit search here. No. Thirty thirteen. Let's see what that uh, shows here. Is that the playlist? Pickle fibers two of two. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Yeah. YouTube. Oh, well. Okay, anyways, let me see if I can. Uh, I think they just had some glitch. Here's that video right here. Okay. And this video has something to do with the mechanical splice. And we're going for that one. Um, this device is being used right here. Come on. Yeah. Right here. That's the device. It's a handheld um, mechanical splicer. So uh, when we uh, when we talked about the, the splicing, and I, I only, we only had one uh, uh, lab session that we could uh, we could do the uh, splicing as far as fiber optics, and I decided to do a fusion splicing. Mechanical splicing is very similar to fusion splicing, but it's different. All right, so it's same but different. Uh, the difference between the mechanical splice and the fusion splicer is, uh, and this is what I went over when we were talking about uh, during the lab, uh, a fusion splice 
is uh, bringing uh, bringing two optical fibers together, aligning them, and then applying a spark here from the top and bottom um, in order to melt those two pieces of fiber together. And after that, it becomes one continuous uh, piece of optical fiber. Now, when it comes to um, when it comes to the mechanical splice, there is no uh, fusioning involved. Okay, and there's no melting glass involved. Basically, we have a connector, and the connector has a certain type of a uh, funnel uh, shape. It's called a ferrule. A ferrule is uh, uh, it's a tubular uh, uh, thing that uh, uh, that goes from the back to the front. And at the front, you have the front of the connector, the front of the ferrule the tip of the ferrule and then at the back you have the kind of a funnel shape inlet all right so what you do is you still have to cleave the fiber and the idea is to bring it inside the ferrule and <clears throat> And when uh, uh, when when this fiber is uh, inserted in there, it is being aligned mechanically, being put in a very close proximity, and precise alignment. And there is something that is called index index matching gel involved, and that in the purpose of the index matching gel is so the light has an easier time passing through the interface between the two uh, the two pieces. All right. So that's the mechanical splice. Mechanical splices are quite popular still. Um, uh, there's a little bit more signal loss involved. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because uh, I'll be giving you some of the answers to that test that you still have to, uh, because if you have unlimited time, I give you some uh, possibility of, and some requirements of searching some for some of the answers. And those searches should be relatively easy for you, okay? So uh, now, uh, when uh, uh, when we leave this class, you can still visit and revisit this playlist that we have. So at the end of this playlist, I have uh, put this. Uh, it is from the other class, but I'm using some of the videos like lab demos uh, for our class as well. Uh, so this one is called ELEC 1013, uh, 20, uh, 21 winter lab 10 which was the other class but it's exactly the same that we would do if we would do the mechanical splice and this is a pretty good rundown on how to perform the mechanical splice i want you to know how to do this i want you to know how to do the fusion splicing uh, because you will be doing that a lot if you get a job in this field the optical fibers are kicking uh in, in with, with a quite a uh, you know uh, with with a lot of energy okay uh in it uh, they, they're becoming more and more popular the optical fiber optical fibers uh to the everyday use sort of thing right uh they're becoming more popular uh then uh, copper is still going strong so i give you a strong background on uh how to deal with the copper links i give you a strong background uh while we're dealing with the optical fiber links uh, it's, you know, it's not going to make you an expert. However, it's going to give you a good starting point if you want to, uh, if you want to pursue your career that way. All right. So you, you get a really good, good starting base. Um, all right. Now, um, we didn't talk much about the um, telecommunications part as, the, as far as airwaves, um, but there is not much to it when it comes to uh, needing to understand that uh, if you know how to install uh, copper, and you know to, how to install fiber. Uh, the only thing that you need to install is a device that's a media converter. It's just one more piece that is going to be connected to whatever the output of whatever device is. And it's going to be a media converter that converts the signal from whatever it is. It could be fiber. It could be copper. Uh, it, and it connects, it, uh, it, um, it converts the signal onto the uh, radio waves. All right. So uh, whenever uh, whenever you're going to install any of those, you are going to have the instructions uh, by the manufacturer, or somebody is going to walk you into it. Okay. So uh, if you know how to do one thing, you probably know how to do the other. Uh, a lot of it that uh, we were not able to do in the practical uh, as a practical aspect is actually mounting the device. But uh, in order to learn uh, how to do that, we would have to go and uh, on the lifts, boom lifts, or uh, skyjacks, or 
or uh, what do you call the scissor lifts um, and start mounting the devices uh, like antenna arrays on the sides of the buildings. And we just don't have that uh, you know, ability to do that, all right? Um, we would need more time and we would just need to uh, start messing uh, with, with our building walls, all right? So, uh, but um, see, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of aspects to this telecommunications field, of this type of telecommunications field. Uh, that a lot of these things, when you have a strong background, you have you can find yourself very easily in this field. And then if you need to learn more, you're going to be walked in by whomever is working with you. Uh, you're not going to be thrown on the, on the white waters uh, by yourself. Okay. So um, uh, if you have any questions about anything that we have done or uh, along the way, if you find yourself a job and you get stuck on certain task, or when you have some problem to solve and then you still, you know, you'll be struggling with, I've done this thing for 30 years. Most of the situations I've, that you're going to encounter, almost guaranteed that I have at some point of my 30 years career doing this, uh, uh, I have encountered some of those situations. So I'll be able to uh, give you some solutions, all right? So by all means, uh, after you graduate, send me an email, uh, be in contact, be in touch, uh, you're good. And plus you're going to have those um, um, those videos. Uh, I think I'm going to keep those for a long time uh, so you can fall back onto them. Now, as far as the assignment, um, the assignment, I asked you if there is, if there was any sort of like a, aha moment uh, that you uh, that you encountered after completing the whole uh, the whole assignment did you get any kind of like a light bulb on top of your head say oh wow that's how it works that's what it is did something did anything really drastically jump at you uh, after finishing that assignment did you um, um, does anybody have any any of that Anything like that? Not really, when as expected, okay. You can actually count, you can actually uh, go on voice. Okay, one question, okay. Shoot the question. There's only three of us here today, so well, you can just go on voice and uh, just speak up. Eh? It's gonna be quicker that way if you want. Why weren't the phones involved in the quote? Ah, okay. Um, I'm glad you asked that question because um, this is the type of contract I wanted you, I didn't give you all the information, okay? I wanted you to notice that and you did, so that's good. And I wanted you to contact me. So that's why I gave you the assignment well in advance and I gave you a long time to complete that. So you ask me questions like that. So whoever uh, left that, whoever was procrastinating and left this thing for the last minute, they were not able to get the answers. And I said that in the beginning, you know, uh, whoever does it right away, you're going to have a chance to answer, ask questions, and I'm going to be able to give you the clarifications. The process of any big project is just that. Sometimes information is being missed. Sometimes you're going to get um, approximate information. Sometimes even you're going to get the wrong information because somebody else got the wrong information. There's communication going on back and forth. And the bigger project, the bigger the project, the more of those uh, questions are. And uh, those are being supported quite often by the NOCs, which is called Notice of Change. I remember in early 90s, uh, one of the companies that I was working for, uh, uh, that was the time when the Kitchener City Hall was being built. Kitchener City Hall, that was a big, that was a huge project. Uh, now, the, our company did some, uh, well, relatively small parts, but uh, to one company it would be a big part. Uh, it was just the telecommunications, uh, just the, the sound systems and some of the camera connections and uh, microphones and conference rooms and all that stuff. So, you know, it was, uh, we had our hands full. So just that part, the notices of change, uh, there were so many of them, we filled two huge binders with just the notices of change. So, uh, to answer your question, why there were not any phones involved in the quote? It is quite often you're going to have a contract uh, that is going to be um, the main company that 
that gets the contract would be the hosting company. It's a very common pro uh, process. The, uh, if it's a small, um, like a dentist office or some sort of a, a store or something like that, um, or a vet clinic or whatever, um, when you have up to like 20 computers or something like that, you might get the whole contract all by yourself and you can, uh, you can get yourself uh, in contact with some of the telecommunication equipment distributors who are selling the phones, uh, like VoIP phones. And then of course, you're gonna have to learn that particular one that, uh, that you are selling. Then you would be selling and providing the phones. Now, if it's a huge project, those huge projects usually are, um, are carried by the bigger hosting companies. And those big hosting companies are subcontracting smaller companies to do their job. And usually uh, what is involved is laying the infrastructure. So installing the wiring, testing the wiring, uh, and distributing the phones. And those phones would be purchased by the hosting company. And sometimes the hosting company sells the telephone sets to the end client. And sometimes those phones are being rented by the end client and the money is getting to the, um, to the hosting company, going to the hosting company. All right? So those were the ones uh, the hosting company was the one was was the company who was dealing with as far as providing the phones. Our job uh, was to receive those phones in the big boxes and skids, and they would be identified usually with the serial number. And according to the serial number, you would also get like a big spreadsheet, like a PDF, not PDF, uh, Excel spreadsheet, and you would have the serial number on the phone and maybe the model number, and then there would be a office number or the person's name uh, that uh, this phone is supposed to go to. So then our job would be just to distribute those phones and connect them. So in this contract, we were not providing the phones, the hosting company was. I wanted you to notice that, and great, a lot of people did notice that, and they asked me that question, and I was able to answer. Uh, so now you know that sometimes not everything is so straightforward and simple, but if you know what to expect, you can just ask, you know, so who is, who is providing the phones? Are we providing the phones or is the hosting company providing the phones? And the hosting, you know, also the hosting company, when they get those phones, they also program those phones uh, in a custom way. So that's why every phone belongs to a certain desk with a, for a certain person, with a certain name, with a certain permissions, restrictions and whatnot. Uh, okay, so those phones are being programmed by the hosting company and we just, what we just did, just received them and we would charge for the time to distribute them on the desk. Okay. Sounds like a nightmare. Why are we on the phone? Um, what sounds like a nightmare? The VOC, oh, the no, NOCs, Notice of Change. Yes, the, <laughs> those, those Notice of, yeah, that's, that's why uh, when you're, uh, when you're doing project coordination, you have to be able to juggle a lot of things in your brain as far as yeah, you, get, you get the main contract, okay? And then you get all those notices of change and they come at different times, sometimes, sometimes you know, a year apart. And you have to be able to organize yourself in a such way that you know that something was changed, and sometimes things are being changed five times. Uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those uh, it's it's one of the quote unquote beauties of dealing with uh, project coordination. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that uh, now getting back uh, now did I uh, Marcus was Marcus who asked me the question about the why we're not providing the phones. Okay, I hope I answered your question. If not, uh, uh, tell me so. So I'll try. I'll try harder. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. Satisfaction accomplished. Okay. Um, now going back to the aha moment. Whoa! Nobody has an idea. Or there, actually, there was someone that uh, noticed that. Uh, I don't think that person is here. As far as the aha moment. When you look at the uh, when you look at the prices, 
and the profits on what you are going with uh, how is it actually you're making money on contracts like this are you making money does anybody have any uh does anybody have the um uh, your sheet for the for the assignment handy kevin or marcus if you don't that's okay all right but i'm uh but i'm yeah, going to it. okay you have it mm -hmm. okay uh so uh that's uh that's kevin here okay so kevin if you look at the last page of your assignment or the last page, the, those uh, the last uh, table. I think this table four, or table five. When you when you have all the profits listed. Yeah. All right. So, um, what's the profit on? Uh, what 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 did you get for the profit on selling the equipment? Uh, selling the equipment, materials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, around four ninety two. I think I'm a little high though, but either way. Okay. What profit did you get on the labor? The la yeah, so my you were saying aha moment. It was the labor. How much is charged for labor? It wasn't really yeah. aha. I kind of speculated that, but it, mm -hmm. to see it actually was uh, a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, right? So the more yeah. people, you, the more people you hire, the more money you make on actually hiring people and uh, and and charging for the labor time of the people who work for you, right? So that's uh, that's the key, right? The equipment, uh, as far as making money on the equipment, unless you are a store that all you do is sell things, then you go by the volume. You have to sell a lot of things to make money. Right? But if you're doing this type of service, uh, then the most money you're actually making on the labor. Right? So that was the that was the probably the biggest aha moment kind of a thing. So. Um, uh, if there is the, the you know there's a bigger opportunity on making money charging for the people's labor, right? Then there is also an opportunity to make a mistake. So if you make a, if you miscalculate the labor time, you can actually lose money on this contract, right? <laughs> and did that happen? It happens all the time. <laughs> Sometimes people just miscalculate, you know, I thought it was going to take me two days, but, it, you know, we're here second week and this still is not done. Okay, we're just, we're just doing this thing so we don't get sued, you know, and then we cut our losses, move to the next project, right? If you keep doing that, yes, you're going to go under, you're going to go bankrupt, right? But, uh, uh, but doing the quotes, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a crucial thing, whether you make money or not, right? So that's why I wanted to uh, give you this assignment. And some information I gave you, some information I wanted you to search, and some of the some of the aspects of that assignment, I wanted to have some of those head scratchers, like the phone things. Uh, you know, when you notice that, uh, wait a second, they're phones. There's no prices. That means you're thinking, you're looking at that, uh, uh, you're analyzing it. You're not just going through the motions. And that's a lot of that that type of innovation or creativity is it has to be employed. Um, uh, while coordinating projects. Now you're the technology class, which means at some point you are going to get into project coordination. Maybe not the first year that you're working for some company. Maybe the first year would be a good idea for you to just go and get your hands dirty and go in the field and experience those things. The more you experience, the more you will know what the people that work for you are doing. Good idea, right? So then when, it's, when somebody comes up to you with some sort of issue or problem or, or challenge, you know exactly what they're talking about instead of just sitting in the office um, all the time from, from day one. Uh, and then you're just going to guess. Uh, yes, at some point, you're going to be pretty good at it right? Uh, because you get some certain problem so many times. Then you're going to, uh, you're going to know what they're talking about, right? But uh, the reason why I gave you this assignment is so you get some sort of experience, so you get some unanswered questions, so you have to uh, you know, uh, ask those and get those things clarified. Now, imagine this project being 10 times bigger, and imagine you're dealing with like seven or eight of those at any given time. And you have five people on that project, you have three people on that project, you have four people on that project, and the other guys are waiting for you. 
uh, because uh, you know you gotta let these guys finish so you can send them. So you're stalling on that. The other one, there's another project that uh, you're ready with your guys, but uh, the the site is not ready because there's something you know there was some delay, and all that thing has to be you know. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I give this assignment or similar assignments to the technology classes because uh, uh, you're the guys probably going to end up uh, after a while uh, doing some of the project coordinations. Uh, it's either by choice or uh, you're just going to do some of the jobs in the field and maybe you're going to outgrow them and you're going to want something more. You're going to be not satisfied with what you're doing. You will be just having the urges of contributing more to the whole humanity, right? <laughs> so you go to the project coordination. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Um, so that's pretty much it for, for this. Now, uh, whoever hasn't done the test, uh, please do so because the test closes tonight, one minute before midnight. Um, and uh, now the deadline has been extended to me to give you the final marks to Monday, three o'clock. First, they, they gave it to us uh, today by 12. And then they extended thing, extended that for us uh, for Monday. Okay, no, sorry, it was Friday, which is tomorrow, twelve, and then they extended it till Monday. So please uh, try to complete everything because you know I gotta have a chance to mark some of that. I think most of us, uh, all, all of us have, uh, or if not most of us, get the. Uh, submitted the assignment uh, thing. So it was a good trip. I hope you enjoyed this whole course. Um, and that's pretty much uh, all she wrote with this thing here. Um, we just scratched the surface of this telecommunications field. Um, and if you, uh, if you choose to uh, pursue the career, trust me, there is a lot of undiscovered. Uh, you, you, know, you, you can be satisfied on many levels, including financial, um, uh, when, uh, when you pursue this type of career. One of the main reasons is that when you go into this type of field, you are going to have the opportunity to start some business of your own if you have the drive to it. If you don't, uh, you can still make a very comfortable living working for, uh, for, for another company, but you have the opportunity to go on your own. It's relatively easy comparing to other fields. Right? Like if you, uh, for example, if you, you know, if you work for the airlines, it's going to be much harder to start your own airline. <laughs> but if you if you do the infrastructure wiring and the installations, it's much easier comparing to other brands to to start something on your own if you have uh, enough knowledge and experience. Right? So uh, you can be as busy as you want, and you can be as profitable as you want in, in this thing here. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, for this whole thing. Okay. Thank you. That was a good course. We would have been more deep. Yes, I would love to give you more detail. You know, if if I had two years full time, then I would be satisfied. But of course, <laughs> we want to. We're not going to have a full time course with network cabling, <laughs> just just for the network cabling, right? But uh, I would I would have enough materials to uh, to have that. Yes, but I, I yeah. Thank you, thank you, Marcus. Okay, so uh, cool. All right. If there is no many any more questions, uh, I uh, I think you're going to, you're starting your vacation right now. Is that is that right? Or are you continuing with some courses to the second part? Oh yeah, vacation. All right, cool. So, well, Friday. Yeah. So uh, you still have to make those two final steps, uh, just like the line walker. You have to make those two final steps so you don't fall down. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Take care, have a good one guys, and uh, don't be stranger. When you see me somewhere, say hello. Have a good life. Oh, here's the stop button here.